So let's take a look at what the BJP manifesto says with respect to housing and infrastructure. It talks about building a hundred new cities enabled with technology and infrastructure. It talks about launching a full-fledged program for rural rejuvenation, uh, launching a massive low-cost housing program. It wants to leverage land as a resource in urban areas, encourage housing uh, through credit availability and interest subvention schemes, and work on freight corridors and industrial corridors. Sanjay, um, it's for the first time that we have a government, a new government, talking about urban renewal, you know, looking at creating new cities. Um, you know, we had some uh, projects like these during the UPA re regime. Uh, a lot of them still stuck in the land acquisition phase. Uh, uh, what do you make of this, this whole focus on urban upliftment, uh, you know, when uh, Mod Narendra Modi went to Varanasi, he spoke about cleaning the streets. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, what do you make of this? So I think if the government uh, has rolled out this manifesto, uh, of increasing urbanization, that means they definitely have a plan to bring the economy back. Because there's no way you can create 100 cities if there's no economic activity in those cities to be able to attract the working uh, people to be able to find jobs in those cities and to be able to sustain the growth of those cities. So which basically means infrastructure development, economic development, and then of course the natural succession of urbanization in those cities. So a lot of us actually believe that that's going to happen. Uh, what's going to happen, will only time will tell. But I think uh, the sentiment suggests that this government will make it uh, an agenda as part of their master plan where the sector, real estate sector, would be given uh, some importance, significance, because it impacts uh, the lives of so many uh, and they, they should be certain some movement. Hmm. Uh, how will they differentiate themselves as a government with the previous government? Hmm. How will they make it more comprehensive? How will they make it more affordable for a common man from housing point of view? How will they make it from a bank's point of view or investor point of view or developer point of view? Will they be addressing the needs of all? That has to be, you know, one has to wait and watch. All right. Uh, Samir, ever since the run-up to the big verdict on the 16th of May and post the verdict, there has been this huge sense of optimism in the country. The markets are on a high. The rupee is uh, on a run. Uh, there are reports of how a lot of foreign money is coming into the country. So in this backdrop of a positive uh, you know, sentiment, people saying fresh, uh, foreign money is coming in, uh, what kind of an impact do you see on the property markets and especially housing pr prices? You know, people, developers have been on the wait and watch mode, uh, holding on to prices. Can we now expect a rally in the next 12 months? You see, the mood has become very positive, absolutely. What had happened in the last one, one and a half years was that the investors had suddenly gotten out of the market. Mm -hmm. And especially in tier one cities like NCR, if you were to look at it, uh, there is a huge investor driven, uh, NCR is a huge investor driven market. Right. Bangalore, not so much so. But markets like these have also run up in pricing so much. Mm -hmm. And there is so much more supply that is hitting the market. Mm -hmm that that is going to impact prices in a negative way even though the mood may be very positive so i think what is going to happen is that if the mandate was not as clear as it has come out to be mm. markets would have crashed now the markets are going to be stable and slowly inching upwards rather than going downwards because the mood has become so positive investors mm. will definitely come back into the market mm. there is an oversupply situation but that oversupply situation will slowly slowly get arrested okay so all those on the wings are now going to make their move and uh, make their investment let's get back to our reporters and let's try to gauge what's happening in the cities uh, how are developers in those cities reacting let's first talk about chennai my colleague jude sanit now joins me hi uh, hi jude welcome to the show uh, tell me how is the real estate industry in Chennai reacting to the big uh, win that BJP has recorded uh, last Friday. Uh, we know Chennai is largely a stable market. Can we now expect a rally in prices uh, given this whole environment of optimism? There's been a lot of optimism in Chennai, so to speak, Basuda. In fact, the developers have already had a long wish list as far as Gen Chennai is concerned from the new BJP government. The first pointer, of course, is the, is, is, you know, the fact that they want to sell existing stock and get done with it already before the markets can continue being bullish, so to speak. So prices are definitely going to see a rise after, after developers finish off, finish off selling the stock. There's also a lot of emphasis that's going to be laid on the inflection point that Chennai's real estate will see in the coming few months. In fact, 
prices have been doing some a bit, a bit of correction in the last two years due to the economic downturn. But what we're hearing is the fact that owing to the absolute majority that the BJP government has received, the inflection point here could be not more than two months away. So what we're going to be seeing is a massive increase in pricing in the next two months or perhaps even earlier. Uh, another very interesting point about what developers are hoping for in Chennai's real estate includes how newer micro markets are being discovered with every passing month. We're looking beyond Omar at micro markets like Porur uh, and newer segments also. Let's remember that Chennai hasn't been seen hasn't been seeing too much activity as far as integrated townships are concerned. That's changing. National developers like PBEL, the Japanese mega city, is coming into play. So you know a lot of activity happening, and it certainly looks good. Bright days for Chennai certainly. Okay, now you also track the Bangalore market. Uh, what's the mood like there in Bangalore? Uh, Bangalore is again a stable market. Uh, what are the big expectations? What's on the wish list of developers in Bangalore? You think Bangalore, the first thing that comes to your mind is infrastructure and connectivity. The, the Bangalore Metro Rail is a project that has, been see, that has seen its fair share of delays. So the emphasis now lies in completing that. In fact, the 42 long kilometer stretch was expected to be, is, will, is expected to be completed only in September 2015, as opposed to March 2015, which was the initial completion date. But stepping aside from the Metro Rail itself, Bangalore is in dire need of a comprehensive suburban rail network and in fact uh, PC Mohan from the Bangalore Central Constituency, the BJP candidate who contested from that seat did, did talk about introducing a comprehensive suburban rail network to connect most of Bangalore's uh, outlying micro markets, most of Bangalore's suburban localities. So a metro rail, a comprehensive suburban rail network surely looks on the fast track. There's also a lot of emphasis on providing LIG housing as a means of slum clearance to get more people into the into homes from the slums that's one of the welfare initiatives that the bjp government there that the bjp candidate there at least is certainly serious about there's also a move to introduce a power plant a dedicated power plant exclusively for bangalore there's been so much talk and so much that's been written about bangalore's power crisis so a power plant exclusively for the city certainly looks like good news for bangalore so infrastructure certainly looks on the fast track there it's probably a game of wait and watch now to see whether all of this actually materializes in the next couple of years. All right, Jude there with his interesting inputs on what's happening in Bangalore and Chennai. Let's now move to the Mumbai metropolitan region and Pune. Pune. Our correspondent uh, Nikhil Sivdas joins us now. Hi, Nikhil. Um, tell us, uh, there are many micro markets in the MMR and we all know that over the course of the last uh, few months, uh, markets have been rather slow. They've been in a slump. Can we expect the mood to now lift in MMR? Certainly, Vasudha. Now, Mumbai is actually a very uh, interesting micro market in market in the sense that almost practically every builder in the city has been waiting for the Modi government to come in. I mean, everyone's practically very tired of the way the UPA government has been functioning. Uh, every practically every builder I've spoke to has indicated that they're firmly in the Modi bank. Now. What's going to happen with the clear mandate that has been given, they're expecting a lot of things to happen. First is they expect buyer sentiment to pick up drastically. Um, they feel that buyers will feel, will feel more encouraged right now to loosen their purse, string, purse strings and actually buy more property. They feel that the sense of caution uh, which uh, buyers had so far will actually vanish now that the Modi government's in and they expect the economy to basically go on a fast track. Uh, but the interesting part here is most of the buyers I've spoken to have been hoping that prices will actually decrease uh, now that the Modi government's come in. But builders, on the other hand, are of the opinion that uh, now that demand is going to pick up, they may actually increase prices, they may keep it stable, and may even consider increasing at some point in time if robust demand comes in. All right, Nikhil, thanks so much for that. Uh, let me also get a perspective from uh, Sanjay here. Uh, Sanjay, for uh, Chennai and Bangalore, like uh, Jude pointed out, a uh, stable uh, market, uh, developers now expecting uh, the infrastructure projects to get completed. But both of these markets are largely IT driven and with uh, Modi's focus on development, 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 uh, you know, good times for these markets, more job creation. I'm not really sure about that. So Chennai uh, is slightly distinct in the sense it had a legacy of very strong manufacturing base, which if you look back last four or five years, they've really lost the edge on manufacturing side. A lot more investment has gone into Gujarat, Maharashtra, Rajasthan and Haryana actually in manufacturing side. So that's a bit of dampener. But IT continues to grow because the talent quality is so good. And because the conservative market never really 
went up drastically. Although for an average, uh, you know, local citizen in Chennai, the prices that have gone up last five years are considerable. Mm -hmm. So who would have thought a villa cherry would fetch sixteen thousand rupees per square feet? It used to be, you know, under four or five thousand rupees per square feet. So it's an interesting angle, but I think it's a very stable market, like you said. Uh, good talent, good rationale. Uh, since they did not go up, it will continue to do well, and I think it will improve over a period of time. But the fortunes will be linked to economic activity because Chennai doesn't have a very large, uh, you know, driver of the economy other than the port, manufacturing, IT, uh, and some regions which are textile uh, driven. All right. Uh, time for a small breather here. We'll come right back and get Samir's perspective on uh, how the Delhi NCR market and the MMR market is going to react to this big electoral verdict. Stay tuned.